In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. I welcome all of you today for this historic sacramental occasion and event, the ordination and installation of the 10th Bishop of the Diocese of Wilmington. I want to especially acknowledge and thank Archbishop Christophe Pierre, our Holy Father Pope Francis's representative to the United States as Apostolic Nuncio. Archbishop, I thank you for all you have done for us in the United States. You have been a tremendous inspiration and influence for us. Today we all pray for our Holy Father's quick return to full health. I welcome my good friend and our Metropolitan Archbishop, Archbishop William Laurie from Baltimore. And with much joy, I welcome my successor, Bishop Koenig, and his family and friends. I look forward to supporting him as my bishop here in Wilmington. Thank you, Bishop Maluli, for your warm and cordial welcome. We've been gathered together as God's family. We ask now for the grace to celebrate these sacred mysteries with worthiness and joy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who out of the abundance of your untold grace alone chose to set your servant and priest William over your church of Wilmington this day, grant that he may carry out worthily the office of bishop and under your governance in all things. May he direct by word and example the people entrusted to his care through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shall not want in the 
guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a Timoteo. Querido hermano, procura ser un modelo para los fieles en todo modo de hablar y en tu conducta, en el amor, en la fe y en la castidad. Mientras llego, preocúpate de leer públicamente la palabra de Dios, de exhortar a los hermanos y de enseñarlos. No descuides el don que posees. Recuerda que se te confirió cuando a instancias del Espíritu los presbíteros te impusieron las manos. Pon interés en todas estas cosas y dedícate a ella. De modo que todos ven tu progreso. Cuida de tu conducta y de tu enseñanza y sé perseverante, pues obrando así te salvarás a ti mismo y a los que te escuchan. Palabra de Dios. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus revealed himself to his disciples, and when they had finished breakfast, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord. Creator Spiritus, mentes tuorum visita, imple superna gratia, que tu creasti pectora. Sie 
Most Reverend Father, the Church of Wilmington asks you to ordain this priest, Monsignor William E. Koenig, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Do you have a mandate from the Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read. Your Eminences, Cardinal Tim Dolan and Wilton Gregory, Your Excellency Metropolitan Archbishop William Lowry, Your Excellency Bishop William Maloli, Your Excellency Bishop John Barres, dear brothers, Archbishops and bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious and lay faithful of the Diocese of Wilmington, dear friends, I am truly pleased to join with you today in this beautiful church, as Monsignor William Koenig is consecrated as the 10th Bishop of the Diocese of Wilmington. And I thank Bishop Maloli for his dedicated service to this diocese over these past 13 years. I invite you to thank him as he does. Today, a new era begins for this historic diocese. It is a, a crossing over to something beautiful that the Lord has prepared. The people of Wilmington receive a new shepherd to guide them, nurture them, and protect them. Your Excellency, Bishop Elect Koenig, where is he, by the way? <laughs> you cannot miss him. And if you miss him, it's your problem. <laughs> so, Your Excellency Bishop Elect Koenig, you have demonstrated your great love for the priesthood of Jesus Christ through years of outstanding service to the Diocese of Rockville Center. May I greet also the Bishop of Rockville Center here? You know him, do you? He's a co consecrator <laughs> And by the way, there is also the former Bishop of Rigvid Center here. I don't know where he is. On the other side, oh well. He knew also the new bishop. So, you know, they, are, they all know him quite well. So you have uh, had an outstanding service in this diocese, particularly as rector of St. Agnes Cathedral and of late as vicar for clergy. I'm sure that the people of Rockville Center and Bishop Barris are filled with joy as one of their own priests is elevated to the office of bishop, grateful for your many years of service. It is a glorious day for the Diocese of Wilmington. Today is the memorial of St. Henry, a German king, who wrote, I quote, for present glory is fleeting and meaningless while it is possessed until in it we can glimpse something of heaven's eternity. But God's mercy toward the human race provided a useful remedy when he made the reward for earthly existence a share in our heavenly country. I like this sentence because it contains a lot about what a bishop should do. It is our hope and prayer that through your ministry, 
the people of God may have a glimpse of eternity and might experience the mercy and compassion of God along their pilgrim journey through the closeness of their shepherd. As you begin your mission, you are well aware of the urgent task of evangelization. Therefore, I place before you the words of the Holy Father. At quote, the outcome of our pastoral work, evangelization and mission does not depend on the material means and resources at our disposal or on the number of our events and activities, but on the centrality of compassion. This is one of the unique things that we, as church, can offer our, brother, our brothers and sisters. Christ kenosis is the supreme expression of the Father's compassion. Christ Church is the church of compassion. And that begins at home, end of quote. So now, if you allow me, I will uh, read an English translation of the Apostolic Letter of Appointment, and later you will see with your own eyes the letter. I re recommend you to watch the signature of Pope Francis. It's very small, but... Uh, Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God. To our beloved son, William Koenig, from the clergy of the Diocese of Rockville Center and until now, Episcopal Vicar for Clergy there, appointed Bishop of Wilmington, greetings and apostolic blessing. Established by Christ for the everlasting salvation of the human race, the church seeking to see man as it were with the eyes of Christ himself becomes more and more aware that she is the guardian of a great treasure which she may, she may not waste but must constant, continually increase. As we reflect upon this, aware of our important pastoral responsibility to provide for all the local churches, it is from the chair of the successor of the Apostle Peter that we cordially turn our attention to the community of Wilmington, which, owing to the resignation of our venerable brother, William Francis Maloli, stands in need of its own chief shepherd. At the same time, we direct our thoughts to you, beloved son, who are clearly endowed with spiritual life, scholarship, charity, and prudent spirit, rendering you in our judgment as one which is suitable, as one to whom we may entrust this ministry of great importance. Therefore, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, from the fullness of our apostolic authority, we appoint you ordinary of the Diocese of Wilmington conferring upon you the rights and obligation connected with your office. You may receive Episcopal ordination anywhere outside the city of Rome from any Catholic bishop, the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, as is stipulated by ecclesiastical law, you must duly make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in this sea. Finally, beloved son, we earnestly exhort you to carry out diligently your Episcopal office according to the magisterium of Mother Church, together with the prayerful intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of Saint Joseph, who teaches us that faith in God includes believing that we ca he can work even through our fears, our frailties, and our weaknesses. Given at Rome, at the Lateran, on the 30th day of the month of April, in the year of the Lord 2021, the ninth of our pontificate, and it is signed, Francis.
My dear friends, we've gathered today in a spirit of praise and thanksgiving to ordain and install the 10th Bishop of Wilmington, William Edward Koenig. Before I address a word of encouragement to you, Bishop-elect Koenig, I would like to thank you, Archbishop Pierre. We would want you to convey our collective gratitude to Pope Francis for appointing this wonderful priest to the Diocese of Wilmington. And in our gratitude, we continue to pray for Pope Francis' swift and complete recovery. Also like to say my own word of gratitude to Bishop Maluli. I think, Bishop, we uh, worked together one way or another over maybe 35 years. And uh, what a good friend and what a good shepherd. He's helped you all to rejoice in the Lord always. And that joy um, we will carry with us forever. And also to Bishop Barris, thank you for sharing a priest so pivotal, the life of your diocese with the province of Baltimore and for forming him in holiness and mission, just as Bishop Murphy formed him in that name above every other name. And so now, dear friends, from near and far, I would like to share a word of encouragement with our newly elected bishop. And as I do so, please keep him in your prayers. For today, he has consecrated a bishop to serve the whole church, and specifically to serve this historic local church founded in 1868, a diocese comprising the state of Delaware and nine counties of Maryland. So with the love of a brother bishop, I offer you, Bishop-elect Koenig, a reflection based on the scripture readings you have chosen for this day of joy and grace. As Jesus began his public ministry, he placed on his lips the words of the prophet Isaiah, words we heard in our first reading. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. Not long before, Jesus had been anointed, had been baptized in the Jordan River, where the spirit of God overshadowed his human nature, which he, the eternal word, assumed in the womb of the Virgin Mary. Jesus was anointed by the Spirit to fulfill the mission for which his heavenly Father had sent him, namely, to proclaim the good news of salvation to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and release to prisoners. Only a glance at the Gospels reveals how Jesus went about healing, preaching, forgiving sin, freeing people from all that had enslaved them their whole life long, and then pouring out his life on the cross in utter self-giving love. As you contemplate the image of Jesus in the Nazareth synagogue, let St. Paul in our reading from 1 Timothy, interpret for you what Jesus said and did that day and how Jesus' words and actions will be incarnate in you and in your ministry as bishop. First recall that Jesus took the scroll of Isaiah and read it aloud in the synagogue. Just so, St. Paul advised Timothy, and now he advises you, to give pride a place in your ministry to the reading, the proclamation of the word. From shepherding the Cathedral of St. Agnes and serving as vicar for clergy, you know how easy it is to become absorbed in the demands, the heavy demands of church administration. But the foundation of your Episcopal ministry, as you know, is an evangelizing catechesis, 
a bold proclamation of the person of Christ and his mighty deeds of salvation, a proclamation that comes from listening to and absorbing the word of God, but also from listening like a shepherd to the needs and aspirations of those you serve, thus engaging them personally in a dialogue of charity, of conversion, of truth, and of salvation. This dialogue of love embraces with missionary zeal the unchurched and the searching, and even those who seem to have hardened their hearts against Christ and his church. And as you know so well, the church's evangelizing ministry cannot be done alone. Rather, you will recognize the gifts of the Holy Spirit among the people of God so as to raise up and sustain evangelizers and teachers ordained, consecrated, and lay. May you be blessed by an abundance of good co-workers, cooperators in the truth. On this day of your Episcopal consecration, St. Paul further advises you not to neglect the gift, the gift of the Spirit, to be conferred on you through the prophetic word with the imposition of hands. Through the imposition of my hands and the hands of these your co-consecrators, through the prayer of the church, a prayer that embodies the prophetic word, and through the anointing with sacred chrism, you will be able to say, as did Jesus, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The spirit who consecrates you in truth and sends you forth to proclaim the truth that is Christ. Amid the unceasing demands of ministry, it's easy for us to become Pelagian, that is to say, to rely too heavily on our natural gifts and talents, our energy, and our goodwill. No matter how blessed, how richly blessed, one might be with such gifts, it is the gift of the Spirit who transforms you after the image of Christ, our great high priest. And it is his power that will sustain you in good days and bad, in sickness and in health, enabling you to love and cherish the church you serve as a bridegroom loves his bride. And just as Jesus was the measure of his ministry, for, the word he pro for he was the word he proclaimed, he was the mercy he lavished. So too, you now hear St. Paul advising you to set an example for those who believe in speech, conduct, faith, love, and purity. Neither God nor our people are looking to us for wizardry or for showmanship, but rather for constancy and fidelity to such great purpose that we will oversee the flock of God more by example than by decree. Imitate the good shepherd who knows and loves his flock, and then you will be able to say with St. Paul, be imitators of me. Only one conformed to Christ by personal prayer and formed in the Beatitudes can accompany with rod and staff those who pass through the valley of darkness. At the end of the day, when you are tired from your labors, when as part of night prayer you examine your conscience, always let the voice of the Good Shepherd resonate in your heart, as I know you do. Hear him asking you, as once he asked Peter, not once, not twice, but thrice, do you love me? 
Do you love me enough to walk by faith as you feed my flock with sound teaching? Do you love me enough to nourish my flock with my body, blood, soul, and divinity and to lavish upon them the mercy I lavish upon you? Do you love me so much that you recognize me in the poor, the marginalized, and the defenseless? And loving the Good Shepherd, your brother, you will love his flock. And loving his flock, you will attend not only to the needs of your local church, but indeed to the unity and vigor of the whole church in union with your fellow bishops, united with Pope Francis, successor of St. Peter and chief pastor of the whole church. On this day of grace and joy, the hearts and prayers of all your friends are with you, as are the hearts and prayers of all those you will serve in the years ahead. May the Spirit of God be upon you so that you will indeed be that herald, that servant, that steward, that shepherd for which the whole church is longing. And may God bless you and keep you always in his love. My dear brother, the ancient rule of the Holy Fathers ordains that a bishop-elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people on his resolve to uphold the faith and to discharge his duties. And so I ask you, do you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted to us by the apostles which we are about to pass on to you by the laying on of hands? I do. Do you resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity? I do. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith entire and incorrupt as handed down by the apostles and preserved in the church everywhere and I at all times? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in the unity of that body together with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? I do. Do you resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation, as a devoted father, and to sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and deacons? I do. Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all who are in need? I do. Do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and to gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear friends, let us pray that the kindness of Almighty God in providing for the welfare of the church will grant an abundance of his grace to this, to, for this, his chosen one. Let us kneel.
gracious of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine. Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and pour out upon this your servant the power of your blessing, flowing from the horn of priestly grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look on the lowly, who know all things before they come to be, and who laid down observances in your church through the word of your grace, who from the beginning foreordained a nation of the just born of Abraham, who established rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers, and who from the foundation of the world were pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen, pour out now upon this chosen one that power which is from you, the governing spirit, whom you gave to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the Spirit whom he bestowed upon the holy apostles, who established the church in each place as your sanctuary, for the glory and unceasing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant, whom you have chosen for the office of bishop, may shepherd your holy flock, serving you night and day, May he fulfill before you, without reproach, the ministry of the high priesthood, so that, always gaining your favor, he may offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the power of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, assign offices according to your decree, and loose every bond according to the power given by you to the apostles. May he be pleased, may he please you by his beakness and his purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering to you through your son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever and ever. May God, who has made you a sharer and the high priest of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessings.
receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, adorned with undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre, and may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him the unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, you may graciously bring to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his shared ministry, sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who are holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them.
them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for me, your unworthy servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of bishops. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in me, so that what I have received by divine commission, he may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place 
place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Matthias Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him. All the honor of the Lord is God. In the name of the Lord is All glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you, Let us offer each other this sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in an unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed as I gather and I stand here before you this day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I just would take a moment, maybe a few moments, just to say thanks to some very important people. First, I'm very grateful. I'm humbled and I'm eager. I'm grateful to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the trust he has placed in me in calling me to serve the people of God in Wilmington. May we together continue to pray for our Holy Father, ongoing recovery from his recent surgery. I thank Archbishop Christophe Pierre, our Papal Nuncio to the Vatican, to the Holy Father, for your presence here today and for your dedicated service to the Church of the United States. While we have not spoken since that phone conversation <laughs> several months ago, you have been and will continue to be in my thoughts and prayers. I thank Archbishop Laurie, the Archbishop of Baltimore, the first diocese in the United States, for your support and guidance in helping me prepare for today and for most especially the gift of the episcopacy which you conferred upon me by the laying on of your hands. I look forward to the ways that we will continue to work together in our province. I thank my co-consecrators, Bishop John Barris and Bishop Francis Mullooly. As many of you know, Bishop Barris was ordained a priest for the Diocese of Wilmington and served here as chancellor until he was appointed Bishop of Allentown, Pennsylvania. And then in 2016, he was appointed Bishop of this other diocese up north somewhere, the <laughs> Diocese of Rockville Center. And I was a privilege to assist him as the cathedral rector and then vicar of clergy and learn from him from his example and guidance. Thank you for the way that you prepared me to assume the episcopacy. And turning to my other consecrator, co-consecrator, Bishop Mullooly, I express my gratitude both personally and on the behalf of the Diocese of Wilmington. I thank you personally for your warm welcome back at the end of April when we first spoke on the phone and then we met in person. In meeting you the first time, I said it before, I felt that I was with a longtime friend. I continue to be grateful for your kindness and generous offer of availability. Please know I will be taking you up on that offer. <laughs> I also express the tremendous gratitude of our diocese for your Episcopal leadership over these past 13 years. Your steady, faith-filled leadership has been a tremendous gift to our diocese, and for this, we are forever grateful. Thank you. As I turn to Cardinal Wilton Gregory, Archbishop of Washington, D.C., and Cardinal Timothy Dolan, Archbishop of New York, words cannot express my thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here today. I look forward to working with you, Cardinal Gregory, and the bishops of the Maryland Conference. And while I will no longer be a short train ride from St. Patrick's Cathedral, Cardinal Dolan's Cathedral, I'm hopeful that maybe the Cardinal will be able to do something about traffic in the metropolitan area <laughs> as I go back and forth to Long Island to visit family. For those men whom I'm privileged to call now my brother priests, I thank you for being here. Your fraternal support and example means so much to me and our diocese. I thank Archbishop Christopher Cardone of the Solomon Islands, who like me, grew up on Long Island and has family on Long Island. I thank Archbishop Nelson Perez of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, who I first got to know when he was an auxiliary bishop in Rockwell Center, and whose friendship and physical proximity I greatly appreciate. I thank the Ukrainian Archipar of Philadelphia, Boris Gudziak. And I thank the bishops of our province, Bishop Mark Brennan of Wheeling, Charleston, Bishop Michael Burbage, the Ordinary of the Diocese of Arlington, Bishop Paul Liberti, Bishop Emeritus of Arlington, Bishop Barry Nestout of Richmond, and the Auxiliary Bishops of Baltimore, Bruce Lewandowski 
and Dennis Madden. I thank Bishop Edward Cullen, Bishop Emeritus of Allentown. I thank the bishops of New Jersey, Bishop Dennis Sullivan of Camden, who I first got to know when we were the priest council in New York back 15 years ago, Bishop James Cecchio of Patuchin, and Bishop Kevin Sweeney, whose ordination and installation I attended just a little over a year ago in Patterson, New Jersey. I thank Bishop William Murphy, Bishop Emeritus of Rockville Center, for his guidance and support over the years that I have served under his leadership. And I thank those bishops who served as priests with me in Rockville Center, and are now bishops in other dioceses and join us today. Bishop Robert Brennan of Columbus, Ohio. Bishop Robert Guglielmoen of Charleston, South Carolina. Bishop Peter Labashi of Manchester, New Hampshire. I thank the bishops of the Archdiocese of New York and Brooklyn. Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio, the ordinary of the great diocese of Brooklyn, the diocese in which I was baptized, and so thank you, Bishop Nick. And Bishop James Massey, the Auxiliary Bishop of Brooklyn and Rector of St. Joseph's Seminary in Dunwoody, as well as Bishop Edmund Whalen, Auxiliary of the Archdiocese of New York, and with whom I attended the college seminary just a couple of years ago. <laughs> and I thank the Auxiliary Bishops of Rockville Center, with whom I have been privileged to serve, Bishop Robert Coyle, Bishop Luis Fernandez, Bishop Richard Henning, Bishop Andrzej Skleshevsky, and Bishop John Dunn. I thank the Auxiliary Bishops of Philadelphia, Bishops Michael Fitzgerald and Bishop John McIntyre. Your presence and prayers today mean so much. Please also know my gratitude for the two priests who accompany me into the church today. Monsignor John Martin was my first pastor as a newly ordained priest. His guidance and friendship over these years have been a tremendous blessing. And Father Eric Fizzano is the Vicar General of the Diocese of Rockville Center. And our working together goes back to the early 2000s when he was assigned as a newly ordained to the parish at which I was pastor. Father Robert Whalen, who carried in my mitre, is a classmate of mine. My other classmates from Brooklyn and Rockville Center, most of whom are here, I'm so grateful for. Monsignors Thomas Harold and Frank Caldwell, who carried in my crozier and Episcopal ring, are good friends, great examples of pastoral charity, and certainly keep me on my toes. It's my family who are here today, both physically as well as through television. I am very thankful. While both of my parents are deceased, I know that they are looking down on me today with their supportive and prayerful love. My gratitude goes towards my two brothers, my sister-in-law, and the members of my, my family, and not only being with me today, but for all the ways that you've been with me over these years. It is also good to know that you are only a phone call away. Please don't change your phone number. <laughs> to my priest friends from Rockville Center and elsewhere, my friends from high school and college years, and their incredible wives, as well as members of those parishes in which I have served, I thank you for your encouragement, your example, your faith, and your goodness. And lastly, I thank those responsible for today's liturgy. The ordination committee was headed up by Monsignor Stephen Don Hurley, the Vicar General of the Diocese of Wilmington. And it consisted of Fathers Norm Carroll, who's pastor of this beautiful church, and I'm grateful for opening this church for us this day, Father Norm, Father Glenn Evers, Father Jim Kirk, and Father Joe McQuaid. A special shout out to Father Joe McQuaid, who was the master of ceremony today and pulled everything together, as well as Michael Connolly, Stan Cheryl Cook, Joseph Corsini, Louis D'Angelo, Kelly Donahue, and Bob Krebs. He did a great, incredible job. You know, usually when it comes to sacramental and liturgical celebrations, you take out the notes of how you did it last time, and you have a pretty good idea of how you're going to do it this time. If truth be told, I would never do this, but there might be some parishes who would just take last year's program and change the date 
and say we're good to go. <laughs> Since, however, there has not been an Episcopal ordination in Wilmington in over 100 years, you did not have that option. And it is evident that it did not matter a bit. You covered every detail so well, and I thank you. And by the way, after you leave here today, you can take the rest of the day off. <laughs> I'm grateful in today's, especially for the, today, also for today's liturgical ministers, our deacon and masters of ceremony, our readers, servers, ushers, and gift bearers. I especially thank our music ministers and the, ordina the and ordination choir under the directorship of the very, very talented David John, John, David John Ikafotis. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry, it's Ikevitz, so I'm sorry about mispronouncing that. You know, while St. Augustine tells us that singing is praying twice, I would suggest that the beauty of your music enabled us to pray fourfold. Thank you. While much of my remarks this afternoon are word of, words of thanks, I also wish to express thanks to the incredible pe people of Wilmington who gather here and represent the various parishes for the late nights and the ladies who are here. I also take a moment just to also express how humbled and eager I am by this call to serve the people of God in Wilmington. First, a word on being humbled. You know, one way of understanding a diocese is through the demographics that it was established as a diocese in 1868, that it's comprised of the state of Delaware and nine counties of the Eastern Shore of Maryland, that it consists of over 245,000 Catholics. But you know, over these past several months, as I've heard and read the stories about the founding of the diocese and learned more about the parishes of the diocese and its people, I have come to know the Diocese of Wilmington that goes far beyond demographics. I've come to know that it is a place of faith, hope, and love. I've come to know that this, this, through the story, of how, a par of how a parish was founded, or a mission begun by a religious order, or a school to educate and form our young was built. I've come to learn this by reading of the ways that the hungry are fed, the stranger are welcomed, the gospel of life is proclaimed, a young man enters the seminary. And whether it was one of these stories or one of countless others, it is this picture of the Diocese of Wilmington that humbles me. For it is a picture of what the first letter of Peter says is a spiritual house that's built of living stones. You, like the faithful of, you, the faithful of Wilmington, and those who have gone before us are those living stones. I am humbled by and grateful for the call to join you as we together continue to form the spiritual house. And secondly, a word on being eager. I look at who we are and look eagerly at what together we can do. I look to the presbyterate who make up the Diocese of Wilmington and the ways that you have faithfully served the needs of God's people in Delaware and the counties of Maryland. As a member now, of this presbyterate, I look forward to praying with you, learning from you, working with you, and building up God's kingdom with you. Please be patient with me as I learn my way around our diocese, and most importantly, let us together discover the treasures that God has in store for us. In addition to the presbyterate, I'm very conscious of the great gift in our diocese of men and women consecrated religious. I thank you for your various ministries and the witness of your very lives in living poverty, chastity, and obedience. Your dedication and witness have helped shape us who we are today. On behalf of all of us, 
I would ask those men and women, religious, who are here today to please stand so we may recognize you. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you. And lastly, I thank, I think of the majority of those who make up the body of Christ in Wilmington, the over 240,000 men and women, teens and children, who are baptized into the life of Jesus Christ and are members of the 56 parishes of our diocese. I am conscious of the great diversity of your gifts and your talents, of your generosity and your unsung service. Mindful of who we are as clergy, consecrated religious, and faithful laity, I eagerly think of what we can do together. Through our baptism into the new life of Jesus Christ, we have been given a common mission, to be messengers of God's love for all, to bring the light of Christ to others, to preach the good news in word and deed. And it is towards this that I most eagerly look. One of the intercessions in the Liturgy of the Hours that we pray at morning prayer on the second Tuesday voices it well. It simply asks God, may our light shine so brightly before others that seeing our good works, they may give glory to the Father. This is my prayer and my hope this day. As I go forth today as thankful, humbled and eager, I invite us to look to the Blessed Mother, the model of the church, as the one who listened most perfectly to God's word and said yes to God's will in her life. May we, like her, say in word and deed, my soul proclaims the greatness of God, my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, God is great. May you and I, may we together as the church, under the patronage of the Blessed Mother, proclaim the greatness of God. May our light shine so brightly before others that seeing our good works, they may give glory to the Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, 
Endow with the spirit of wisdom those to whom you have handed on authority to govern, that from the flourishing of a holy flock may come eternal joy for its shepherds. As in your majestic power you allot the number of our days and the measure of our years, look favorably upon our humble service and confer on our time the abundance of your peace. Give a happy outcome to the tasks that through your grace you have laid upon me, whom you have raised to the, or to the rank of bishop. Make me pleasing to you in the full fulfillment of my duties, and so guide the hearts of people and pastor, that the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherd, nor the care of the shepherd be lacking for the flock. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.